Good evening. Ira Epstein with your Spider ETF wrap up. And this wrap up is for Thursday, the 6th of January, 2022. And we're about 7, 10 p.m., 7, 15 in the evening right now. Interesting. I woke up this morning, of course, to Camila Harris and then President Biden, uh, both beating up President Trump, accusing him of being un-American, his crazy power over the uh, Republican Party and how the Republicans have to get some guts some kahunas, how's that, uh, and break away from what he does. Okay, more politics, but it was really midterm election time using this day, which is a terrible day, you know, a lot of people going to jail over this uh, and going. I didn't realize, you know, the, the president did make a, a good point. Uh, even Civil War, nothing like that had ever happened. So very important. And, you know, blame probably does belong at the president uh, Trump's doorstep. He could have stopped it. He didn't. Then we go on and we look at all the data coming out. This is a week you've got to sit back and say, okay, a bit of a watershed event, okay? Uh, we're going to see a runoff on the balance sheet. Today I wrote about my evening full research for my futures traders uh, about what uh, St. Louis Fed President Bullard is saying, James Daly out of uh, San Francisco, where they're at, what they think, everybody's in favor of the runoff and doing it sooner rather than later. And maybe if you do that, you don't even have to do as many rate hikes because now the market's talking seven rate hikes happening fairly fast, not this year, four this year and three next year to get you where you're going. So you have gone from black to white just like that. What is the market built in? The market is built in all that bearishness already. Be careful. It's the first week of the year and you've flipped the switch. Is it going to stay flipped on you? Second, you get jobs data tomorrow. You've got to pay attention to that. That will not turn the trend one way or the other. It could create a heck of a bounce in the market, but it's not going to turn the psychological trend about inflation. The Fed does come out. Each one of these members that I'm reading, they think the second half of the year, you're not going to have this inflation problem. It's going to remain elevated, but not anywhere near what we have right now to a man that I'm reading. Do we need seven interest rate hikes at that point? If you're running off the balance sheet, isn't that sort of a tool that supports the idea of interest rates are going to stay up? The Fed's not in there rolling that money again. So tapering ending, you know, the Fed could surprise everybody and do a half point hike if they're going to do one in March and take the air out of the market like that instead of doing a series of gradual ones. I don't know if they're going to do any, but that's what you have to deal with. So when we go to Apple, and now let's talk something else before I get any further. We had a great webinar today for those of you that attended, and we, we got full, okay? So we filled it up. Um, I want to thank you. It was a lot of fun. It was fast paced. If you want me to do a, now a different stock, because I'm reviewing Apple this week, I want to change it. Give me your choices. It's got to be something that's well known, the public looks at, and I'll cover that for a week as the lead item here as we go. Get you involved. So when you're on YouTube, write that. And while you're writing me, hit the you thumbs up. That helps the ratings for me. The ratings bring in the way that I could support doing these for you. Okay, so on Apple, looks like we're in a correction phase. The market has a higher high, lower low, that is not a trend. Yesterday, the market had fallen back after this break to the neutral line, the 18 uh, day average of closes, and it fell back under it today. So at 171.64 from 182.94, the market has fallen roughly $10. And for the week, how much is it down? Well, do we have a weekly chart here? I don't know if I did one. No, I didn't start off with that. I should have. But I might even add that when we start next time just so you can see it. But we can count that the market from its high point here, down 1.2%, next day down uh, 4 point, I'm sorry, 2.66. So let's call that 4%, and today another 2 So you've gotten, you're down about 5.5%, roughly. Okay, we'll see what tomorrow brings. 
Down here is the main moving averages. At this point, I don't see them in play. What's probably in play is the lower Bollinger Band at 169 and a quarter, but you're not in a real downtrend. You've left an uptrend, but you're sort of in a wandering area, and momentum is pointing down. So you're not oversold, momentum down, bias down, not trending. Now, the zone that if you rally at, look for the market to fight at, is 176.16, the 18 uh, day average of closes. I don't see anything in that market that's exciting. When I take a look at XLF, the financial sector, how could you not be friendly to that if we're going to do all these interest rate hikes? The banks are going to make money. Number one, they're flush with money. You know that. The banks know it, and the Fed said it. So it's not Ira's idea. Number two, I look at a market, though, that's trading over the upper Bollinger Band. What do I teach you? Never. Never buy over an upper Bollinger Band. It is an algorithm designed to punish you if you do that. The market will let you in if you're determined to buy at the right-hand side of it. It doesn't matter what the price is. You don't want to be over it because being over it can get you into fast trouble. It's like selling under it, and then this happens. Buying over it, you can be back at that 18-day average. Pay attention. What about momentum? Well, both numbers were not over 80. Both on this day are over 80. Day one of getting both numbers was today. No, yesterday, Wednesday. Day two is today. You have to be over that tomorrow to change the nature of the market from overbought to locking in a bull trend until the red line closes then back under 79. On pullbacks, you start an accumulation phase. Moment you lose that momentum, out you go because the odds favor that you're going back to that 18 day average then. Disney fighting this upper Bollinger Band. You don't want to buy over Bollinger Bands and you're not trending. You have a higher high, lower low. You're basically drifting here, not doing a heck of a lot one way or the other. In FB, the meta platforms, you went down Yesterday, you hit the Bollinger Band. What are you supposed to do when you hit a Bollinger Band? You're oversold. You've hit the first time. Take my enhanced Bollinger Band course. It's going to give you a doctorate degree in this. Out you go and you go, guys, this is for you to play. And all of a sudden, you get a move like this. Now, let's assume you wanted to sell it again. Well, tomorrow might be the interesting day. Then you know at least your stop has to be over the high right here this day. The SOP would have to be over 340.309. Could it have been a sale today? Zero chance it made the lower and low first. Next, we move over. Let's take to the XLI, the industrial sector. I like the industrial sector a lot. And the reason is I believe that we will peak in Omicron from everything I am reading now, this month of January. I don't see another variant to hurt you at this point. More and more people are getting COVID. They will get the herd immunity even if they don't want to get the vaccines. And more and more people are getting vaccinated. So as a society, it's coming in. And I understand the divergence and so do you. Our Chicago public schools, the teachers walked out third day now where they're not going to be in there and in the wisdom of the city of the stupidity of a city I live in the worst mayor in America she turns off the access to the teachers to teach remotely I don't care if the action is legal or illegal the families don't want the kids sitting in front of the TV all day let them learn remotely fight it out in the courts that battle we have nutty people here okay up to the upper Bollinger Band, backing off, embedded. Interesting, okay? It still looks bullish to me. Then we come to XSD, higher high, lower low, market coming down. Will it hit this number? I don't know, could. Is there a reason to be long or short? None. Are you trending? Not with a higher high, lower low. You ended whatever the uptrend. You, you couldn't even get to the upper Bollinger Band, and I don't think you'll make it to the lower one right now. What about semiconductors? You want to be short that? Let me think. Two-year backlog of orders. Everybody wants them. You got pricing power to say, I, I want another 10% increase, and I should be short them. CNBS, okay. You're down to the lower band. So as bad as the cannabis is, and this industry stinks, the only good thing about the industry is it stinks and you get high off of it. The second good thing is 
People are paying taxes instead of giving that money all the time to the guy that pays no taxes. He's running you the other a weed. And you get a grade you understand. I applaud that. As for the stock and ownership so far, it absolutely goes up in smoke. When you go to XHB, the homeowners, well, this is a problem now. If 30-year mortgages are at a one-year high and you've got a tight housing market, you've got a market that still is going to keep its price high, you don't have a big supply on it, and you got to pay up for it. Something's got to give. Maybe the slowdown in appreciation of the homes. Maybe there's enough there for home builders to, in some manner, create more homes. Their problem is the material cost. I mean, copper is still $4.35 a pound. It's not two sixty dollars where it was at one point a year ago, right? Two years ago, right in that range. What's lumber doing? Well, it crashed early in the year. It's come back. So you've got to pay attention to all that. Right now, this chart is bearish. One word, bearish. I think the pros are selling it in this area with a stopover so far. Two days ago is high. Uh, energy sector. Again, I teach you never buy over an upper bowl in Japan. And I am bullish. I'm not bearish. I'm bullish. I think you've got a base here. I just read where one of the shale producers, is it EQG? It's one of those. Uh, it, they're talking, well, they will produce more oil. They can do 5% more, but they'll only do it when they're sure they can make their return on money. Okay, that, well, that's American business, of course. But I, I would think at $80 a barrel, you can make them some money. Um, gold miners, you want to be short at a Bollinger Band on that crash? No, you want to pull in your shorts. That's what I teach. Doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't mean I don't control your account. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm telling you what I teach. That's where I'll stay. GLD, okay, you've turned bearish on this. Momentum down, everything. If it can let go to the downside because of tomorrow's jobs data or whatever, the potential's there for 165.50. If it doesn't, it probably has to fight a battle in here figuring out what to do, but you should have a bearish slant now, not a bullish slant to this market. Mining, I love the mining stocks, the XME. You lost the embedded reading, so what are you supposed to do? Not here. What are you supposed to do? You've hit in the upper bowl in Japan. I teach to come out against it. And a day where you lose it, the odds favor now that unless you regain that red line tomorrow, closing back over 80, and the odds are not good for that, that the price is going to find a way to drift back to wherever these moving averages are to regroup. That, that's what I'm looking for. Copper. Again, the pros came out. I'm a pro. Um, you can see where the market's at gets up there, pulls back to the 18-day average, there's now nothing to do. You have a lower, low, higher, high in sideways action. When you come to TLT, you have a market that tries to rally to get back over the 18-day average, slips back. You won't stay under that very long, but you have a lot of resistance over you, and you have a top, a serious top in place. I will be shocked if you take out this high again. I can't think of the event that would make that happen. So that means to me that now you're getting all the moving averages over you and suddenly the 18-day average is about to crisscross, probably tomorrow, and try to get under the 100 and then attack the others. So you've got these moving averages, understand them and learn how to play with them. Last in the uh, euro currency, is this a trend? It isn't a trend. If you get our charting software packages in my trading kit, you're going to learn that pattern is sideways. And it's, it's something you avoid at all costs. You, it, it's going to make you sell here to come back down here and buy here under an 18-day average to get back there. Everything wrong. And then when it breaks out, it catches you because you went short when you shouldn't be short over the 18-day average, it breaks out. You get long under the 18-day average because you're convinced it's going up, it breaks out, and you're on the wrong side. Run from these patterns as fast as you can. If you get our futures trading kit, it teaches you chart patterns. It has video series in it. It's got links to understand from even the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the different patterns, the different courses, how to work with options on all this. Get your education. And you see this charting software that we're using? You can try it out. No credit cards, nothing involved. We just want you to try it. 
Go to our website under free uh, tools. Give yourself a try with it. Yeah, you are trading futures if you're trading DIA, SPY, QQQ. You know that. You're just hiding behind the ETF name. Take care.